Hey, sweet friend, I see you. You're juggling all the things and you're trying to do it well. You're managing the house, wrangling the kids, trying to spend time in the word while drinking your cold coffee, and perhaps even trying to find a moment to chase those dreams that are in your heart. You want to grow in your faith. You want thriving relationships and you want to live with intention and joy, but sometimes you feel more like you're running on empty. I'm your host, Katie, and I'm in the trenches too. I'm a wife, homeschool mom, and iced coffee fanatic with a full plate, just like you. And I'm here to help you find the joy in this messy journey of life by growing together in biblical wisdom and by taking one step forward at a time. All right, are you ready to grow? Let's do it, sis. Well, hey there, my beautiful friend. Happy May to you. I don't know about you. I'm guessing this is the same for you. But for me over here, there is a heck of a lot going on right now this time of year. We're finishing up the homeschool year. We're taking all the field trips. We are full blast into baseball season, which is so fun. I feel like we're at the ball field almost every night of the week, but I'm thoroughly loving it. My two boys are playing together on the same team this year, and my heart is so full. They are playing pitcher and catcher a lot of the time, and it has been such a joy to get to watch them play together. So that is going on, and of course, we're getting ready for all of the summer traveling. On top of that, my sister, Dory, who's been on the podcast several times before, reached out to me the other day and she said, sis, give me all your travel hacks because we're getting ready to take a big trip this summer. She's got four little ones now, four little girls. And she's like, sis, I need all the travel hacks that you can possibly give me. And so it actually made me think of a past podcast episode that I did actually a few summers back. I just felt like it was perfect timing to bring back this episode for a replay so that you can be ready for all of your upcoming summer trips. And so today I'm going to be sharing 10 travel hacks for your upcoming summer vacation. Actually, I went back through and listened back through the replay. I'm thinking it's more like 13 or maybe even 14 hacks that I'm going to share with you. So it's going to be a whole lot in a short amount of time. You might want to take some notes because some of these I think you're going to find really, really helpful. Before I pull and play the replay, I also want to let you know that quite a bit has changed in the world since this episode originally released. And specifically, I talk about a past vacation that we took to Disney World. And I don't know where you stand on Disney right now. A lot has changed there within their leadership and policy and things going on at Disney. A lot has changed in my heart and my mind regarding Disney. We did take a trip in the past many, many years back that we thoroughly enjoyed and made some wonderful memories. I hoped to take another trip there again in the future. Right now, I'm really praying through that because at the moment, it looks like most likely we will not be doing that. That's just personal conviction, but I just did want to point that out that so much has changed and that this episode was recorded a couple years ago. And so I do reference taking a trip to Disney. Wanted to just point that out. And I want to encourage you to stick around to the very, very, very end because I'm actually going to share an extra bonus travel hack with you. Probably my favorite one that was not in the original recording. So stick around to the end for that last bonus hack. And without further ado, let's go ahead and cover those 10 travel hacks for you or upcoming summer vacation. Several of you have reached out to me and been like, Katie, like, tell me all the things about how you travel all the time and pack and how you take kids along and like how you do this thing and keep your sanity. So I was like, okay, let's do it. Let's do it. So I started just jotting down a few of my travel hacks. This probably isn't even a comprehensive list. This is literally like I was standing in the shower thinking all this over, like grab my cell phone and jotted down (laughs) the top 10 things and a few bonus tips for good measure too. So I hope that you find this episode really insightful and inspiring and that it helps make your life just a little bit easier the next time you head out on a family vacation. So here we go. We're going to go through 10 travel hacks to make your life easier on your next family vacay. Ready? Let's jump on in. Number one, plan in advance. Now, if you know me at all, If you know me well, especially, this is no surprise to hear that I'm a planner. I'm a planner in advancer, (laughs) like big time. 
One time we went to Disney World. I'm not kidding. I started planning that trip 18 months in advance. And I got to be honest, it was a lot of work, but I was so glad that I did. And I know that that's not for everyone. Not saying you have to plan all your trips that far in advance, but Disney is a big, big trip. And there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts. If you're staying on property, if you're riding rides, you want to do fast passes and dining reservations and all the things. And I was like, man, if we're going to Disney, I want to do and see it all. So that sucker took a lot of planning. (laughs) Like I said, they don't have to all be planned that far in advance, but I highly recommend planning your vacations and your trips in advance for several reasons. One is that if you're booking things early, you're going to actually end up saving a lot of money. If you're booking flights, rental cars, sometimes even hotels, and you're planning in advance and booking early, you're going to save a lot of money. Like the cost of a rental car goes way the heck up if you wait until you step off the plane to go get that rental car versus booking it weeks or even months in advance. So that's that's a big thing with planning in advance. I feel like for me personally, it just helps me mentally stay on track, right? Because especially as a mom, we have so many things running through our head and planning in advance and just having my like my thoughts and my notes all together just helps me stay focused and keeps me sane (laughs) and happy. So that's another reason. But yeah, saving the money, keeping my sanity. These are great reasons to plan in advance. I will tell you, we typically fly Southwest Airlines. I have one credit card that I use and it is actually a Southwest Airlines credit card. And so I'm when I'm using it, And I'm, of course, I'm paying it off in full when the bill comes the next month. That's a whole nother story and a whole nother episode. But anyway, that's how we do it. But I'm racking up points for free flights. So that's how we do a lot of our flights is we fly free with points. I'm not actually a huge credit card fan, just kind of on that note, just to give you a heads up on that. But we do use them for that purpose and that purpose alone. Also, when we're planning in advance and booking hotels, we love Airbnb. We've stayed at some really cool Airbnbs. We've had some really unique and awesome experiences. We also love to plan ahead and travel at times when airfare is the lowest and the least amount of people are traveling. So flying on a Tuesday or a Wednesday is a great idea. Planning things, attractions, staying overnight at hotels, We love to do those actually on weekdays. Like we love to check in on a Monday. There's like no one out anywhere when we travel and vacation on Mondays. That's my favorite is checking in and going to attractions on Mondays. Also the seasons of the year, the time of the year, fall is going to be less busy than summer. So that's something to take into consideration. If you don't want to be fighting crowds, you can look at traveling in the off season as you're planning in advance for your next family vacay. And along these lines, one other thing that I like to do is share our travel plans with a family member. Typically, this is so funny. I just actually sent over our upcoming itinerary (laughs) to my mom, like three pages all typed out. She was laughing. She's like, I'm going to print this out. But it has our flight numbers, our hotels, the towns that we're going to be in, the sites that we're going to see, just so she knows where we're at. You know, if you get somewhere where there's not cell phone service and there's some type of emergency, I just like to have one family member that kind of knows what's going on and what state we're in, right? Where we're at that day. I also let her know or let a trusted family member know all other important info, things like life insurance policies or living wills, power of attorney, that kind of thing. Especially if it's just Chad and I traveling and the kids are at home and it's like, I just want to make sure that all my ducks are in a row and I can relax a lot more and just have peace on our trip, knowing that all that kind of stuff is lined out should something ever happen, that there's a plan in place for our kiddos. So that was a lot, but that's all. Number one is plan in advance. Number two, as you're planning, plan a buffer day into your vacation, into your trip. This one gets me. (laughs) I learned this one the hard way and I continue to learn this one the hard way. One time we were on a trip and I planned our days so full morning to night for days on end that like the fourth day in, my whole family was so exhausted and ran down that I personally had a massive migraine just from lack of sleep. And I seriously had an emotional breakdown. (laughs) And I was like 
crying on the trip. And I was like asking my family, please forgive me. I totally overbooked and overplanned. I'm this adventurous spirit that if we're out and we're traveling, I'm like, I want to do it all. See it all. Daylight to dark. Let's go. I don't very often do the relax on the beach scene. Sometimes I do. And I'll be honest, when we do that, I always end up enjoying that too. But I'm like, man, I want to experience the food and the culture and the sights and the sounds and the scenery and the landscapes and the people and (laughs) all the things, you know? So I'm planning our days crazy full. I've learned the hard way to plan a buffer day, plan some downtime, plan some time where, and this is one of my family's favorite things to do, where you can stay in the hotel or in the condo or in the Airbnb. You can order in pizza and just chill and rent a movie, right? Netflix and chill, watch a movie, whatever, hang out by the pool for a half a day, and just relax and rest. So that's really important. Number two, plan a buffer day. Number three. Okay. Some of y'all are going to eye roll. Some of y'all are going to be like, yes and amen. That's awesome. (laughs) Some of you are going to be like, I don't know, never thought of this before, but anyway, here's what it is. Matching (laughs) t-shirts. I'm serious, you guys. I love to put my whole family of five in matching t-shirts. In fact, for our upcoming trip, I actually just ordered them this morning, matching t-shirts. And my husband is sometimes like, seriously, Kate, seriously, we have to do matching t-shirts. I'm like, yes, for three reasons. Number one, obviously you heard me giggling. It sparks joy for me. (laughs) I love looking back at pictures and seeing our whole family of five in these matching t-shirts, like all, all over the travels that we're doing. It's just so fun. It sparks joy. It's easier packing is the second thing. As I'm helping everybody pack, it's a no-brainer what shirts to bring because it's like we have these matching t-shirts all planned out for every day of the trip. And the third thing is it actually helps me keep an eye and a handle on our kids. So for example, when we're in the airport and everyone has on a bright yellow t-shirt, right? Like we're the only five people in the airport in a bright yellow t-shirt. So it helps me look around and just really quickly do a head count and keep my family all together, like keep my ducks in a row in these yellow t-shirts, right? And then sometimes I'll create ones that say Team Hedrick or whatever that are super fun. But I just, I love the concept of matching t-shirts for those three reasons. So if you don't, if you don't believe me, just try it on one of your upcoming trips and I promise you it'll change your life. They don't even have to be like all cute and fancy made t-shirts, but just put everyone in a, say, blue t-shirt or bright orange t-shirt and just see how it changes your life. I promise you it will. (laughs) Okay, number four, when you're packing for the trip, roll your clothes. So here's what I do is tell my mom about this. And she's like, you have to share that on the podcast. That's so good. When I'm helping my kids pack, I will have them pack complete entire outfits. Like they'll lay out their shorts, their little undies, and then their matching t-shirt. And we'll lay it out, fold it in half, and then I'll actually roll it up together. So it's like this little log of clothing, if that makes sense. And it helps so much because when we're on our trips or I actually even do this, like when we go to the pool or when we go camping, literally we get up in the morning and I toss them their little clothing roll and it's so handy and easy. Or they just grab their little roll and head into the bathroom and change their clothes and it's all together. They don't have to fish around in their suitcase. They're not hunting for stray socks. It's just literally all in this little clothing roll. That's another life-changing tip. Promise you. Number five, Things that I always pack and take with me that I've learned to pack and always take with me, a sweatshirt. (laughs) I used to always get so cold on our trips and I constantly would be somewhere and I'd have to go buy a sweatshirt. And again, this totally would bring on an eye roll from my husband. Like, seriously, Kate, why didn't you just bring a sweatshirt? (laughs) Whether it's a restaurant or some outdoor adventure that we end up doing in the evening, I always wished early on that I had brought a sweatshirt. So I just started bringing one with me. I always take a sweatshirt. Even if you're going somewhere warm and tropical in the summertime, pack that sweatshirt. You'll be glad that you did. A baseball cap. If I'm going days on end with hashtag all the dry shampoo in the world and all my sisters said yes and amen, I'm always really glad that I have a ball cap with me. (laughs) So I can just throw my hair in that messy bun, throw on my ball cap. It looks cute. It's multi-purpose. It keeps the sun out of my eyes if we're swimming or hiking or whatever else. And it completely covers my dry shampooed, haven't washed my hair in days hair. So (laughs) that's a necessity. The next thing I always bring, cash. 
How many times do we get on a trip and we're needing to tip the bellboy or tip whoever, whatever, and we just need a little cash or say we just need to grab a coffee and we wish we had a little cash instead of using our debit card to, you know, pay a $2 tab. So cash is one that we're always bringing. And then some source of protein, whether we're in the car or on a plane or camping and hiking or whatever else, and we get somewhere where we're out for the day and we're away from food and restaurants or whatever, or maybe it's a flight over lunchtime and there's not going to be food available. I always keep something with me, some form of protein, whether it is a a beef stick or some mixed nuts like trail mix. There's a keto mix of nuts that I just absolutely love. It has all different kinds of nuts and it also has little chunks of chocolate. It's my favorite. Protein bars are a good one. Protein shakes, you can keep those with you and mix them up if you need to in a pinch for a meal. So those are things that I always bring. That's tip number five. Always take a sweatshirt, a ball cap, cash, and some type of protein. Moving on, number six is I keep a travel bag. What I call a travel bag, it would be like toiletries, bathroom essentials. I keep a travel bag stocked and ready to go at all times. So yes, this means having a second of everything, you know, not just your shampoo and conditioner and, and contact solution and toothpaste and all that stuff that's in your bathroom, but you actually have a second set that stays in a designated, what I call travel bag, and it's stocked and ready to go all the time. You've got your hairbrush, a blow dryer, curling iron, anything that you could need in just a smaller amount or a smaller size. And you keep that thing ready to go at all times. And when you get home from a trip, you immediately restock it for the next trip. That's been a game changer for us. Tip number seven, load the car the night before your trip starts. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. All the young mamas are like, yes, you feel me on what I'm about to say. Morning of a trip and you've got the husband, the kids, all the luggage, all the things, trying to get everybody breakfast and out the door. And you're just absolutely sweating (laughs) and you're, you're carrying kids and you're carrying all the things and luggage and you're just drenched in sweat and you're frustrated and your nerves are shot and everyone starts getting snippy and growly and you physically aren't feeling good by this point and your brain is frazzled and you're trying to think through all the things that you forgot and you're rushing out the door and you get an hour down the road and oh my gosh, we left that bag at home. Okay. Who's been there? (laughs) Who feels me on that? So much of that stress can be eliminated by completely loading the car the night before your trip starts. When we leave on our upcoming trip later in August, you better believe the night before we head out for our flight, we will be going over everything and loading the car, checking through all the suitcases and making sure that everything's loaded so that the morning that it's time to leave, it's literally like get everybody up, breakfast, and we're out the door. Everything's already loaded. We're good to go. Tip number eight pack strategically. So you only have to take one bag in at a time to your hotel. So if you're going and say you're staying the night before a flight at a hotel, and you don't want to be dragging this giant bag that has all your vacation clothes in it, right to that hotel just for the one night and you're digging through it and you're everything's disrupted and falling out and you got this giant suitcase, you're trying to lug it in. Pack strategically and pack one small separate bag that has only those overnight clothes and your toiletries and take that one single bag into the hotel. Or this works really well too if you're on a trip like we're going to be. We're staying at like seven different locations through this trip coming up later on in August. And so I'm going to be strategically planning and packing all of our outfits so I know, hey, the first three nights, the first three hotels, we only need this bag to go in. Okay, we're done with that. Now the next three nights, we only need this bag to go into the hotel. It's just a lot less stress. It's a lot less packing and tossing big bags around and digging through stuff because you don't know what you need or where it is. So strategically packing those bags is tip number eight. If you couldn't tell, there's a lot of planning ahead (laughs) that goes on over here. It will really help you in the end. Tip number nine, I love to stock a snack cooler and my kids love this. They call it the treasure chest. And the thing about the treasure chest is it keeps everyone happy. 
it keeps everyone snacking on better food than you can find at a gas station. And it saves a lot of money. And in fact, speaking of gas stations, just hand in hand with this tip, we love to stop at rest areas instead of gas stations, right? You take the kids into the gas station and there's all these temptations, all these candies and sodas and all this junk that they don't need, but they want because they see it, right? So if you're at a rest area versus a gas station, that temptation's not even in front of them. Plus it's like, hey, the snack cooler is stocked with all your favorite snacks because we planned ahead, right? I'm like, go open the treasure chest, the snack cooler. We keep one with a cold pack in it with drinks, Gatorades, waters, apple juices, all the things. And then we keep a second one that has snacks. So typically we bring, like I said, uh, pretzels or nuts, protein bars, granola bars, uh, fruit snacks. The kids like fruit snacks. I'm trying to think what else we put in ours. Meat sticks. They really like those. Freeze-dried apples. My kids really enjoy those. So those are just a handful of the things that we snack our treasure chest slash snack cooler with. Tip number 10 is, you guessed it again, I plan ahead. (laughs) Wherever our final destination is going to be, I will open my handy dandy Walmart app. I will make a grocery order with whatever breakfast foods, snack foods, water, And whatever else we might need, but I just pop in and I make an order and I plan it for a pickup time that I know we're going to be there. So if I know when our flight's going to land and what time we're going to grab our rental car, I'll figure out what time we would land at the closest Walmart and I'll just have an order ready to go, right? All of our grocery snacks, breakfast foods, waters, all the things just right there ready to pick up and take to our condo or our Airbnb and to stock the kitchen with. So that that has been a really handy and helpful tip. It's one actually that I plan on utilizing here when we get ready to take this big trip in August. So let's see, those are the top 10. I actually have three bonus tips to throw your way. I'm going to go ahead and just share those with you now, and then we'll just recap all of the travel hacks. I hope you're getting so much out of this episode. It's really been fun just to get it down and share it with you on the podcast today. So a few bonus tips is as soon as you get home from your vacation, take all your trip photos, purge out the ones that aren't great, take all the rest of them, upload them to somewhere like Shutterfly and make a photo book. Do this as soon as you get home, as soon as possible, because all those memories and places that you've been, all that stuff is fresh in your mind. And so you can add that all into the photo book, little captions about where you were on what days or what you were doing. And it's just going to be the freshest on your mind as soon as you get home. And let's be honest, it's way more likely to get done and printed if you make this as soon as you get home. We have this really fun stack of photo books from all the family trips that we've taken. And it's so fun to look back through those. Another bonus tip is, and especially if you have little kids, This bonus tip is kind of an interesting one, but sometimes I will actually let my kids take a bath, put on clean clothes, actually the clean clothes that they're going to be wearing the next day. So if they're taking a bath and they're clean, I'll just let them sleep in their next day clothes and they get up when we're camping, they're up and out the door of the camper and we don't even have to mess with digging out and finding their clothes for the day. So if you have little kids, this is an especially handy tip is just dressing them in the clean clothes, their clean next day clothes. And the final bonus tip I have for you is if you can make this work, (laughs) scratch that, make a way to make this work. Because let's be honest, we don't all have a bunch of extra time or cash laying around, but this is something that we prioritize that we just made a way to make it work. And we're so glad we did. It's taking one-on-one trips with each of your kids. And I know you may be thinking to yourself, oh man, you know, I we don't have the time, the cash, the childcare, the whatever. But if you can figure out a way to make this work, it will create some of the most memorable and special memories for each of your kiddos. We've done it with all three of our kids now. And those one-on-one trips that we've taken with them have been some of our just sweetest memories with each of the kids. They talk about them all the time and they'll never forget. And in fact, as soon as I got home from each one of those trips, I made each one of them a photo book, <laughs> just like we talked about. So that's all my tips. Let's just do a quick run through. Let's just recap these travel hacks. And yeah, they'll be great to have in your back pocket as you get ready to head out on your next family vacay. Number one, plan in advance. Number two, plan a buffer day. Number three, one of my favorites, 
matching t-shirts for the whole family. Number four, when packing, roll those clothes, make a little clothing bundle for each family member. Number five, always bring the essentials like a sweatshirt, ball cap, cash, and some kind of protein. Number six, keep a travel bag stocked and ready to go. Number seven, load the car the night before your trip starts. Number eight, pack strategically so that you only have to take a minimal amount of things and bags into the hotel each night. Number nine, pack a snack cooler and stop at rest areas instead of gas stations. This will save you This will save you money and headaches (laughs) and from eating unhealthy snacks. Number 10 is plan ahead and order a Walmart grocery pickup order that you can just pick up on your way to the hotel. And then those bonus tips, make a photo book as soon as you get home. Have your kiddos sleep in their clean next day clothes to save hassle in the mornings. And the third and final one there is make a way to do one-on-one trips with each of your kiddos to just create those awesome and special memories. All right, sweet sisters. I hope you love this episode and found it helpful. If you did, share it on your social media. That would mean so much to me. You can do that or hop into Apple Podcast and leave a five-star review for the show. That would be great too. That's always a great way to say thank you. Okay, so I hope that you thoroughly enjoyed hearing about all of those awesome travel hacks, and I hope that you find those helpful as you head into the summer traveling season. The bonus hack that I want to share with you, like I said when I opened the podcast today, probably my favorite travel hack of all. It's silly and simple, but it's so helpful. And it's that we always, always bring along gallon size Ziploc plastic baggies. I always just grab a handful of them, stuff them in one bag. Like I'll take six or eight bags, stuff them into one bag, and we'll just throw them in the car. And we have found so many uses for them along the way over the years in all the different places. Everything from putting wet swimwear into the bags to collecting seashells in the bags, to packing sandwiches or picnic lunches, and oh, I need a bag to put the sandwiches in, and there it is, collecting trinkets and everything in between. So that is probably my favorite hack of all, is to have just a handful of those plastic Ziploc baggies with you when you travel. Okay, friend, like I said, I hope that you find this tremendously helpful. I do want to mention one last thing before we go today, and that is my signature life coaching program, the Faith Fueled Breakthrough Go at Your Own Pace course. I know as we head into summer that many of us are thinking about our physical health and the way that we look, and I want to encourage you to take a look at your heart and your mind and to think about your mental, emotional, and your spiritual health on top of, or not only when you're considering your physical health. So if you are someone who is looking to shake off the weight of past situations and trauma and confusion, and you're someone who wants to walk lighter and stronger and have more clarity and deeper faith, if you're someone who wants truly to grow closer and deeper in relationship with God so that you can be a better leader in your home, so that you can be the wife and the mama and the friend and the daughter that God called you to be and that you can live those things out and walk that life out without a bunch of roadblocks and without all the pain from your past to continue to come creeping back up into your life and preventing you from the life that God has called you to live, then I really want to encourage you to head over right now to faithfueledbreakthrough.com and check out this signature life coaching course. The awesome thing is that it's go at your own pace. So you can go through it over the entire summer if you want to. You can go through it throughout the course of a month if you want to. Most women go through it over a period of six weeks and they have absolute total, complete life transformation in just six weeks. But you'll be able to go at your own pace. You'll have access for the lifetime of the program. And there is also a payment plan available for you. So head on over to faithfueledbreakthrough.com or just click the link in the show notes to take a look at that program if you are looking for total life transformation as you head into this summer. All right, friends, I wish you the happiest summer season ahead that ever was. And we will catch you next time right here on the Stepping Into a Joy-Filled Life podcast. Hey sis, if the podcast is helping you grow or bringing joy to your life, would you leave a quick five-star review in Apple Podcasts? 
It'll help more women to find the show. Also, I invite you to keep growing with me. There are two ways to do that. First, be sure to join the Step Into Joy Sisterhood over on Facebook, and then head to katiehedrickcoaching.com to check out my available studies and courses. All the links are in the show notes. One last thing, I'm here to remind you that you don't have to have it all figured out to move forward. Just take that one next step.